How's everyone doing today? It's CJ Halleck with cjhalleck.com. And in this video, we have gotten to the point, um, if you followed along through the um, the pre-steps for the webinar or the uh, copy uh, selling this along with the previous videos and the tutorials that I've put together for you guys, we're at the point where we're ready to build a website. So in doing so, there's a few things we're going to have to do before we actually see the website live on our uh, domain. And in order to get there, we have to install the WordPress files. Uh, you can do that and go along with um, step for step if you want to start from scratch and install the files and the plugins and all that. But I've already cut most of the hard work out for you. I've already done it and set it up as a template. So we're going to go ahead and get started by downloading that template. And you can do that by going to digitoolbag.com. That's D-I-G-I-T-O-O-L-B-A-G.com. And when you're here, just click on the free downloads button in the header. This is going to take you to the uh, download library. And if you see here in the very first uh, download available is the website design kit. This website design kit is a zip file that will basically be installing on our server that once we extract everything, it will completely from A to Z set up almost everything you need so once we get logged into WordPress from that point we'll be able to actually go straight into designing and we won't have to touch any plugins or anything so we're gonna go ahead and click on download now this is gonna take us to Dropbox where we have the new install.zip so we're gonna go ahead and click on download and click direct download this makes it so if you don't have a Dropbox account you can actually download it without having to sign in um, if you don't have a Dropbox account I highly recommend it even if it's just a free version get yourself a few uh, megabytes that you can use for online storage for you know your logos and your important files for your business so you can access it and you have backups of it not just on your computer but you have it in the cloud so if you're somewhere and something comes up you can you know go in and work on your stuff um, even when you're not at your main computer. So now that we've installed that, um, and, and, and if you want to check out Dropbox, I'll make sure to put a link to sign up. Um, and it is affiliate link for me, so I do receive uh, compensation, which I think I get like an extra 250 megabytes or something like that in storage. Um, but basically, uh, I believe if you use the link, you also get extra storage uh, doing it that way than you would if you just go straight to Dropbox and sign up. So I'll make sure to keep that link in the description for you and in the course notes. Moving forward, we're going to actually come in here. Um, and I'm going to open this up and show in folder. Move this over. And I'm going to drop this over the zip file. Whoop, almost picked the wrong one. So I'm going to open the zip, well not open it, but I'm going to drag the zip file over into my desktop so I know where it's at so I can access it easily um, while I'm going through everything. And I'm going to go right back to the uh, page we were on. Um, we can close out the Digital Bag website and the Dropbox site. Now we're on hostjack.com. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to sign in. And at this point, if you followed along, you should be a registered user. I'm going to bring this over and put in my username and password and sign in. And once you're in, you'll see that you have uh, your domains, your hosting, and your SSL certificate. We're going to go under web hosting and we're going to click on manage. This is going to take us to what I call the uh, pre panel which is basically the information about your account and then the button that we're going to use to access the cPanel. If you click on that, it'll open up the actual cPanel for your account where you can upload uh, files through the file manager and you know, like we did in the previous videos, create email addresses and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but for right now, we're just gonna come into the file manager and this is going to open in a new tab and, and don't worry don't don't try to close this out you're gonna want this tab open <clears throat> excuse me you're gonna want this tab open in a little bit we're gonna come back in here and make a few changes um, and create a database and a few things so we're gonna come in and like I said you're gonna watch me do it all so don't worry and don't feel like you need to get overwhelmed 
Once you're here, you're going to go to public underscore HTML and double click that to open up that folder. Now, when you're here, you may see some files already in here. Um, it's not always going to be the same. Sometimes um, the default install when they set up the cPanel, sometimes you'll get, you know, some dot you know html files or .php files and different things show up in here if you do all you need to do is click on one to select it i use shift and the down arrow to highlight everything here and then i'm just going to click delete and i'm going to skip the trash and permanently delete the files and click confirm now that we have the public html directory completely empty we're going to upload the zip file so we're going to open this up and it's going to bring us to an upload page so we're gonna grab this zip file this new dash install zip file that we just downloaded from digitoolbag.com we're gonna drag it in here and drop it this is gonna go ahead and install the entire well not install but um, upload the entire file you need in order to actually get um, WordPress up and running so while that happens there's a few things we're going to need to cover. The first thing is, you know, and it's not going to show up here automatically, but it will over time. So what we're going to do while that uploads is we're going to come back into our main cPanel. And I recommend let's go ahead and open a new notepad. Um, and you're going to want a notepad because you're going to have to uh, copy and paste some stuff. And, and, you know, it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to remember. So we're going to come in here and we're going to go to my SQL databases. And we're going to go ahead and create a new database. So what you're going to want to do here, you know, and you see where I tested this before, I have a database here. But what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and start brand new. Um, and what am I going to do? And it doesn't matter. It can be just random numbers and letters. You can just do that. You know, not really because it can't have the, the semicolons. But... You know, you can just type out, you know, whatever. Don't make it something that's just a word. Like you don't want to put, you know, database, you know, for xx.com, right? So you might might want to do like DB and then maybe some letters and stuff. I'm going to pull this over. Actually, no, I'm not. Let's just go ahead and put this back. Maybe. Maybe not. There we go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do something. So we're just going to do uh, 234258. I don't know what that is, but it does works. <clears throat> so you're going to highlight that. And you can right click and click on copy here. Or when it's highlighted, you can use uh, Control C on a PC, Command C on a Mac um, to copy that. We're going to click Create Database. And then you're going to come over and paste that in over here in your notepad and you're going to want to make sure that you keep that in the notepad you're going to want to uh, we're going to use that here in a little bit <clears throat> now you're going to want to click go back and then you're going to come down to add new user you're going to put in a uh, name for a username here uh, which normally i'll do similar to the database so i know what it goes with and then i'll add a character you know a few characters at the end so you know like we can do you in right uh, or USR um, just basically like short for user let's just run with that and then with the password this has to be um, a very you know and, and coming up with your own password is something I strongly disagree with go ahead and use this password generator that's why we have this notepad open you're only gonna need this one time um, so we're going to go ahead and click on password generator and it's going to give us some passwords while this is here. I'm going to go ahead and move this over here. You can click generate password and it will, you know, give you random passwords. So click on it a few times until you find a password that you like, um, that you think is, you know, solid enough and, you know, hard enough to guess. Copy it, paste it over in your text file make sure you click on I have copied this password to a safe place and then click on use password that's gonna automatically populate the next two sections go ahead and do this there we go so that's gonna already you know fill in both of these with the password that you got from the password generator and then we're gonna click on create user then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually tell right now because we have a database and a user but it's not 
it doesn't know that that user goes with that database. So you're going to come down here and just click Add User to Database. It already has the user and the database in place. So we're going to click Add, click on All Privileges, and click on Make Changes. Now that we have that done, everything is good to go. So, um, and you want to make sure you keep a copy of your database, keep a copy of your user. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and bring over the user because I forgot to do that earlier. Um, and keep that pasted over in your notepad. So once you do that, we're going to come down to the bottom of this page and click go back. And we're going to actually... Uh, now that we've got all that done, we really don't need to be in the database. So we're going to come back over to the file manager. Check this. You see it's 100%. You see it's completely uploaded the new zip, uh, uh, new install zip file. So we're going to come over to our um, file manager. And if you don't see it here, do not worry. We just need to come in here and click on reload. And there you have it. So now we're going to click on this and we're going to extract this folder. We're going to make sure it's in a public underscore HTML and click Extract Files. Click on Close. And then now you have the install file here. There's two files that are in that. There's a ph installer.php and another zip file. This zip file is all of the, the plugins, the theme, everything that we need for our website. So we're going to go ahead we're going to click on one of them, select both of them by using shift up and down depending on where you clicked on it. We're going to click on move and then we're basically going to come in here and we're going to delete the new install folder to make it install in this public underscore HTML folder on your server and click move files. Then we'll click up one level to go back to that or we can just click on home and go back to the public HTML folder. And at this point, you'll want to select the new install folder and delete that. And then select the new install zip file and delete that. And now that we have that, if you go to your website, um, you know, we'll just do tbflabs.com. You're going to see one of two things. This is one of the two things you'll see. Um, the other one you'll see will have like an index of the files in your server. So it'll basically just show these two files. Um, if you see that when you go to your website, just click on the installer.php or if not, or even if you do and you want to follow along with all the steps, basically come in under tbflabs.com or, or whatever your domain is, add a forward slash and then do installer.php and hit enter. Um, or return depending you know Mac or PC this is going to take you to uh, what is called the duplicator plugin um, and system to install everything um, the archive passes it shows everything is good to go in the archive validation passes across and then options there's in in the options section there's two different um, extraction methods what you're going to want to do is click on manual archive extraction and click I have read and accept terms and notices and before you click next there was a reason why we went back to the file manager and that is you want to click on the zip file um, inside your file manager which is the all the files for your website and simply click extract make sure it's the public HTML and click extract files and this is going to put everything for your website live and you see automatically you have a lot of files right here, right? So now that you have that extracted, we'll go back to Duplicator and click Next. So you want to make sure you have Manual Archive Extraction selected and then check the box and click Next. Now that you've done this, uh, you're going to want to basically like set up and put in all that information we put um, on our uh, notepad. So you're going to do the database name is going to go here, the user, and then the password, which is that complicated thing. And that is why I had you use a notepad. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, I have it over on uh, my other screen so I can go ahead and put this in. Um, and then I'm going to just copy and paste my database, my user, under user. 
and then my password and paste that in under password and then once you finish that um, you'll basically want to click on next it will ask you if you if it wants you to run installer with these settings it will run um, and it displays like the username and the server name you want to look at those and make sure you put those in right and you didn't accidentally select you know a character from like the password or something so you want to make sure those are right and click yes and then now it's going to actually bring you in to basically get all the settings right the URL is should be set at HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then your domain will go in here uh, you want to just put the domain itself don't worry about the www um, and then the title you're gonna want to come in here and fill out the title so we're gonna put TBF labs and then under options this is you can do one of two things you can either create a new username here um, that you're gonna like completely stay with or which is what I'm gonna recommend you do is create a basic username here so when we go in and create our actual username with the wordpress.com account and the gravatar account that we signed up in earlier videos you can have your avatar show up and everything else so we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna um, with this one just do uh, username will be start password let's do hashtag delete um, once again you want to check your site URL make sure everything is good there and then click next and now if you come over here and click admin login you will see that you have WordPress installed on your website and you're ready to log in so I'm gonna go ahead and get started by clicking typing in start and hashtag delete which is what I'm using for that temporary username that I just created over here we're gonna click login now when you're logged in there's uh, two very important steps and it's gonna land you on the steps already but you need to make very like pay close attention and make sure you don't skip this because if you do accidentally skip this step it's going to leave you vulnerable for hack um, on your website so we're gonna come in and click remove installation files now it's gonna say everything has been removed we're gonna click on store data and click remove installation files again just to be safe um, and it says no duplicator installer files are found on this WordPress website so that is it um, now if you actually go to the um, type menu bar where you see the name of your website and you can click on visit site and I'm gonna do this in a new tab so we can keep this open and then if you come over you'll see you have a basic you know if you will website in place um, at this point it's setting up your Elementor plugin if you decide to run with Elementor Pro it is currently installed but it is not active um, I built this template with the Elementor Pro plugin so if you need to use the Elementor Pro plugin um, be sure to check out the links in the guide that goes with this training or in the description to follow along and get yourself a copy of the Elementor Pro plugin. Um, disclaimer, it is an affiliate link. I will receive small compensation if you do that. But moving forward, now that we've done this, we're going to come back down to tools and we're going to start doing um, a lot of different steps. But I don't want to go into a you know massive video with all this. So I'm just keeping this like one step at a time so be sure to follow along in the next video as we um, create a new user and delete you know uh, the the temporary user we cr we created and move forward with designing our website so hope you guys have helped this uh, uh, have enjoyed this I hope it helped you I was trying to say both of that at the same time um, but yeah so if you like this video please like it be sure to subscribe to my channel on YouTube and click that bell for notifications so you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. And uh, that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care.